This video is only one part of an in-depth review, so check out the rest at thegoodride.com. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I'm James Beastie. Welcome to The Good Ride, where I make bad decisions so you don't have to. This is the GNU RC C3. So I wanted to give you a little update and apology. After the shutdown in 2020, I tried to overcompensate and honor every reader request to review every board they asked, and I got way behind. But I was looking at this video, I was gonna delete it, but then I realized that other than the Capita A simulator, which is not continuing on in 2023, all these other boards are basically the same for 2023. Hope this helps and sorry it took so long. So I spent the whole season testing it here and there against other boards like the Yes Greats, a longtime favorite, the Ride Twin Pig, an emerging amazing favorite, something that we've really been loving this last season. And then next to that is the Capita A Simulator, another really fun, poppy, amazing, mostly camber kind of ride, kind of like the C3 here. I rode this with my Burton Kendos and Union Atlas. Got some time on these with the Contact Pros as well. I got this in a wide variety of conditions. Everything from some pretty hard snow to some pretty messy snow and a little bit of something in between. Didn't really try it in powder because only had a few of those precious days this year and I wanted to try other boards during that time. To give you a short summary, this is a medium flexing, mountain freestyle, asymmetrical twin that brings a more stable, but more technical, a little more catchy element to it in comparison to the GNU Rider's Choice C2. And it's a fun board to turn. It's an easy board to ride switch. It doesn't do really well in powder and the base isn't super fast, but it really does well in that like middle ground, like medium to firm bordering on icy snow and just has a fun, lively, energetic flex that's easy to butter for camber. And it just felt really comfortable, really easy, really cruisy. That's the kind of ride I felt like it was. Very comfortable in the park and on the mountain. When it comes to sizing, this 57.5 felt right. Maybe if they had a 55.5 or a 56.5, I might be a little happier, but it just felt really good for my weight and I didn't have trouble turning it with my size nine boots. When it comes to shape, you have an asymmetrical twin. It likes being set up duck and it likes to stay there. You don't really wanna set this board back or anything like that. You just keep it centered and duck and you're gonna have a good time. When it comes to the camber profile, it has a really mellow rocker underfoot that's just barely above the snow. And it comes down into a very mellow camber. And I think that's why this board feels, instead of like feeling super locked in and catchy like full camber does, it feels kind of like semi locked in. It's still technical. It's still not easy to skid a turn if you get off your game, but it's way better than I thought. And it's just an interesting camber profile. It's different than some of their other C3 camber profiles. Of course, wood bends differently. You never know, but that's what I had and that's what I rode. And in comparison, it's kind of feels like maybe even just a shade softer, a shade easier to ride than the A simulator, but it's more definitely more technical than the Twin Pig and the Greats. It tracks really well and one foots really well and flat bases down like long flat runs really well. Now let's talk flex. You can see in the middle, it's pretty stiff, but in the tip and tail, you get a little more flex and it's, it's a true twin in that in flex. So you get a little more give and then here's an overall flex. You can kind of see it's got, it's got some give to it. It breaks a little easier than I thought in the middle. It butters better. It doesn't feel like the liveliest of the GNU line. Some of those stiffer flexes have a little more pop, but this was so easy to access for an average rider like myself. And I really like that. I thought it was like, this is kind of what I want for who I am. It just, it was easy to pop. It was easy to butter, especially for a camber board. Not the easiest. It's not like 
the, the C2 rider's choice. That's, this is a little more work, but it still wasn't out of the realm of possibility for an average guy like myself. With, with canoe boards, they just have this kind of woody personality and it feels good. It feels like a snappy, poppy bit of wood. Now, when it comes to speed, the RC C3 is better than the C2 model, for sure. It's just more stable, it just tracks better, it just feels better flat basing at speed. It's still nothing to write home about. It's not any better than any of these boards. They all just kind of felt the same there. There wasn't any board that had a clear advantage over the other in terms of mountain speed. Now, when it comes to base glide, the base glide on this was my least favorite of all four of these boards. I felt like the other three were pretty close to one another. I think the A-Simulator had a little bit of an advantage in wet snow because of that structured base that they give out. It just works in all conditions really well. It never stops you up. The rest of these might need a little structure when it comes to springtime if you're gonna do a lot of that riding or you'll just have to fight through it. One thing that's cool about the RCC3 is if you don't wax it all the time, it's not gonna shit the bed as much as other boards out there when it comes to just base glide and that kind of stuff. But if you really like a fast base, you might wanna look elsewhere. When it comes to uneven terrain, this is really good in uneven terrain, especially in comparison to the A simulator, that bucked and bounced me around a little bit more than I'd like, where this one, it's, it's, you could definitely feel the bumps and everything like that, but it, I didn't feel like I was losing my line and getting off my game like I did with the A simulator. I love the way the Yes Greats and the Ride Twin Pig handle uneven terrain. Even being shorter, a little shorter than these two, like at 151 and 154, I just really enjoyed those more, which is weird. I usually like a longer, narrower board, but this is not bad at all. It was close enough uh, to be fun, and I love the way it turned through bumps. It uh, really does well there. So here I am over a year later editing this video, and I realized that I didn't talk well enough about the edge hold here. So this has a very unique side cut, the heel side, which is deeper, has full on magnet traction. The toe side, which is shallower, has mellow mag. And that's very unique to the industry. And other than the A simulator, which has a little bump on the heel side, their death grip on one side, this is pretty unique. And I thought this would be super weird riding it, but I didn't even notice it. And it took me several days of riding in varied conditions to finally see a difference. And that's only when it's softer, thicker, grabbier snow, you feel the heel side grab a little bit more than the toe side. But other than that, I was surprised to not notice it that much when I was riding. And I think it's okay. It's not quite as grippy as full magnet traction in ice, but it's a little better than a board with mellow mag. And it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. And when it comes to turn initiation, it's really fast edge to edge. And I felt like it was a pretty turny board. It has, it has a very balanced side cut that works with a wide variety of turning radiuses. So you can kind of do like a circle carve pretty well, not amazing. You can do a long drawn out turn pretty well, not amazing. Kind of like the assimilator here. What I found with the Twin Pig and the Yes Greats is they were a little more fun for that like kind of more circle carve across the groomer carve, but just by a little bit. And I think it's just a really fun turning experience. It's not as hard a carver as you would think for being C3. There are a lot of other C3 boards that do better than that, but it's still pretty good, especially for like a mountain freestyle twin. It was a fun turning experience. Powder, no thanks. Just, it's not a board that's like feels right if you set it back, it needs to be centered and duck. And the, the tip and tail are just basically touching the snow. There might be just a touch of early rise. So it's a lot of work. I didn't even wanna try it. It's just, there were so many other good powder boards in this short season we had, I just didn't even try it. And it's just not a board I'd want to be on. I'd much rather be on the RCC2 than that, or the S Greats, or the Ride Twin Pig. And I wouldn't want to be on the Assimilator either. They're just two mostly camber boards. They're really fun turning. They're a little more fun turning and carving than the Greats and the Twin Pig, but they just don't have that float. 
When it comes to switch, all four of these boards are amazing. This RCC3 just, it, it they all feel like cheating. It just, you know, if you set this up centered in duck, that shallower side cut on the toe side just matches perfectly with your turn. That deeper side cut on the heel side matches perfectly with your turn. So riding regular, it turns a little easier, but when you throw it around switch, and you get awkward because you're not as good at switch as you are regular like me, this is gonna make it easier and it's a lot more fun to turn. This is a pretty balanced park ride for what it is. I thought it wouldn't be as good as a board for jibs, but Nick actually thought it was okay. And some of my friends who borrowed it and took it out in the jib park liked it. I didn't jib, I'm just too broken these days and too old. I miss it though. But pipe, I love this in pipe. And I liked tracking into little kickers. Like I said before about the pop, it's really easy to access. So when I go slow into a small kicker, I felt like I could spring off it pretty easy. And it it's just, it seems like a great board for like small to like a little bit bigger than medium kickers. You might even be able to go big with this uh, depending on your weight. And pipe was my favorite. Overall, I think this is a very fun ride. And if you're an old school camber rider, you'll be fine with this as a one board quiver, especially if you're used to like riding camber twins. But if you're like me, great addition to the quiver. If you had something better for powder, let's say like a setback directional board that you can carve and ride powder with, that would be better for those days. And then this could be more of your daily driver. And I think I like this better than the C2 for my style of riding. All our reviews are a best effort, objective opinion from an average rider's perspective. There's no brand oversight. And we're free to say whatever we want. We send back everything unless it's a favorite. Then we ask to keep those or straight up buy them. Now, if you need advice, fill out the Me Harmony profile in the contact us section of the site. It's the only way I can help you properly. If you want to support us and if what we reviewed appeals to you, it helps if you buy through our links. So thanks for watching.